Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Chai T42 by Steeped Games. Plays about 30 to 45 minutes, is for ages about maybe 10 and up, and obviously it's, it's, it's a two-player game, but it has the solo mode as well. In the game, you're going to be utilizing your tea harvester, moving around the board, gathering tea for not only yourself, but your opponent if you're playing with one, utilizing your worker die, rolling them, and then assigning them to the board to gather tea and movement and cards to facilitate that movement, and then av after that, there's certain things you'll be able to do with your the dice that you have placed and the year will end and then it'll go once again and repeat itself eventually you're going to gather boats and those boats will harvest the tea and bring them to the new world or wherever it is that they're going to be taking the tea and you'll hopefully have people drinking your wonderful marvelous tea after a certain number of boats have been completed the game will end on that year and you'll score points based on the boats you've gathered your unique scoring card or character that you've gathered any cards you've placed on the board whether it be crates or whether it be unique tea collections and then whoever has the most points at the end of that year will be the winner of the game let's go ahead and take it down below i'll show you how it's played what it's got in it then me and callie will review it for you and then of course our outro Welcome to the game Chai T42, and currently I have it set up for two players. To begin the game, go ahead and distribute these guys out randomly, one for each player. You can choose to play as the B or the A side. A is for the beginners, and B is for the more advanced. Set the rest of these guys aside. You won't be utilizing them. Each player is going to get their own worker die. Blue for the blue player, and red for the red player. All of these T's here are in little tins, and you can go ahead and pop them out, utilizing this little cap here, and you'll be taking taking these and you'll be playing with them throughout the game because these are the T's that are going to be hopefully moving from the harvesting area of your board all the way up to the docks of your board where you could be taking them off and putting them onto ships and hopefully scoring a boatload of points. You're going to go ahead and also shuffle the two decks of cards you'll be using. There's going to be the boat cards and then there's going to be the T cards. The boat cards shuffle and deal one out in each of the areas except for one leave the deck on the very bottom right hand side and this one over here you're going to shuffle them out deal them out in for one in each area here except for the six area you'll place the entire deck of those t's uh and the teach cards and the reason why you do that is because you will actually be hopefully drawing these guys and choosing between them whenever you place a six here uh place your little t harvester here on the board and then go from one to six and place these tokens on the left hand side of the board these guys will be moving from one side to the other take the first player marker and give it to the person who rolled the highest when rolling one die each uh that number so if he rolled a six and a five this person will be the first player to begin the game. Make sure all these boards are set up correctly and you can tell by how they're supposed to be set up correctly based on the art. The art actually connects all these boards together and then you're ready to play the game. Go ahead and set aside the rule book and begin with the first player. And how it's going to work is that player is going to choose this little guy here and move him three spaces on the board. So I'll be moving on these T spaces here. You can move them up to three, so I'll move him two. After you do that, you'll take the piece that you moved on to, the first player will, and select one of each of the T's for each player that is listed on this token here. And in this case here, it will be a purple for each player, and will also be a yellow for each player. And you'll put them on the bottom of each player's board. Then after that, you're going to have a number at the bottom right hand side here. This number will allow you to gather movement or T's that are different types and put them on the bottom of your board. So for instance, if I wanted to, I can go ahead and take a blue one here and I could also go ahead and take a green one here. And uh, for this guy over here, maybe he only wanted a white one. And so he has that one extra left. He can use it as a movement. And when you move T, it's pretty simple as to how it works. You'll take any of the T on your board and move it up based on the spaces it allows you to move on. And you'll check the lines. So in this case here, a yellow, green, or a purple can move up here, and then a white, a blue, and a black can move up on here. And you'll see the pathway that they take based on the colors that you're moving. So in this case, if I wanted to move the purple up one, I could go ahead and do that. You can use the numbers for as many spaces of movement as you want, but only one of each unique type of T. So you're not gonna ever have two of the same T. Then you'll take the token, flip it over, and place it on the farthest side of the clock when going around the board here. So token will go here. The next time another token will be taken and placed, it will go uh, here, and you'll push it up. Basically, you'll flip it and push it up just like that. Uh, thusly, it's always the farthest space away from your little guy here. After you've gone ahead and moved and then gathered your a T as well as any bonus movement, then every player is going to go ahead and take all their die and roll them once. You'll just roll them once. These will be the die you're using for this specific year and or round, whatever you want to call it. The first player will take their die and place them on the board here. 
Uh, the board has several things you can do with it. First, you can go ahead and place any die here to take any one tier of your choice. Second, you can place any die on any of these areas here to gather the cards corresponding to them. It must always be the number of pips or higher. So a one or higher, a two or higher, a three or higher, a four or higher, so on and so forth. This six here will let you gather three cards here. Choose your favorite among them, take that card, and replace the rest on top. When you take cards here from this area, you'll place them on the board in the indicated areas, which will allow you to move T based on the symbols. So when a specific T is in that area, it will always move up one. So in this case, if I took this one here, I could place this guy just like that. And thusly, I can move all purples in this space when this card is placed and whenever a piece moves there, up one space because you want to get all these up as far as you possibly can. And remember, in order to place that here, I'll have to have a six. Um, another area is this area over here. You can use these for actions, whether it be to take the first player, to refresh all of your cards, to move a card from one area to another, or to switch to different cards. So if you have another card, maybe it's over here for instance, I could take it and switch it with this one when placing a die in this space here. Uh, another thing is this area here. This lets you gather boats. You'll need straights of at least two or more. In this case, you can see a one and a two. The highest value state straight will always take the boat and other players can contest it. So for instance, if this player wanted this area here and this boat, one and a two. But let's say that this player wanted the same boat. He could take, or she, a three and a four, which would trump this one, making this one move somewhere else. You could also go up to three or even four die. The highest number value or the longest will win. So longest is valued first and then the highest value. Over here is the last area of the board, and this area is for duplicates. So for instance, if I wanted to, I can go ahead and place two or more of the same die, and that would be good for movement at the end of the year. So what's basically going to happen is after all the die have been utilized on this board here, you'll remove all of the die that are not placed on these two areas. Uh, also, you'll be taking the boats here at the end and placing them onto your board based on your color. So this guy, maybe he'll go over here, and this guy, he'll go over here. And then finally, you'll utilize this area here. And if there is only one guy here, he'll get the five. If it's two people, the highest will get the five, and the next highest will get the three. It works just like the boats do, but instead of for straights, it'll be pairs or triples or quadruples. In this case, you'll get five points of movement. So one, one, two, three, four, and five. And the same would be said for a three and a two. And the objective of the game is to get these pieces onto the boats. And the boats have specific requirements. Like, for instance, this boat here has two white. And only white can go on this boat. So if you take this piece here, and it's going to go onto this boat here whenever it pushes off at the top end of this boat, of this, of this area here. I don't know if you can see that or not, but he will go over here just like that. When the boat gets filled up, you'll take off the pieces, put them back in there, and score the boat. And the game will end after you trigger three, four, or five boats, depending on how many boats you're trying to fill up. That will end that specific year. At the end of the round slash year, you'll take all of the dice and put them back into the player's little areas here. You'll also replace the board back with boats. So if this boat was taken, for instance, I can go ahead and take from this area here a new boat and a new boat. If nobody takes any of these cards here, let's say a couple cards were taken previously in the previous round, you're going to be going ahead and filling up this area. And the way that works is you take the lowest card, or the highest card, I should say, and you remove it. And then you're going to go ahead and move all these guys down, place a new one, place a new one, and a new one. And bam, once again, you're ready to start. The first player will take this guy and he'll move up to three spaces, select and flip and so on and so forth. And that's basically the idea of the game. Once somebody gets that coveted three, four, or five boats, whoever has the most points at the end is the winner of the game. Let's review it. So Chai T for two, um, and this is basically a game that is for two players, um, and of course has a single player variant as well. In the game, you're going to be utilizing your workers, placing them on the board, and gathering your T, moving them across your board, and of course, if you're smart, putting them onto your ships. But that's not the only way you can score points, which is really cool about the game. Uh, additionally, there's different variants you can play, whether it be longer or um, less time, 30 to about 60 minutes, I believe. And uh, you're also gonna have an A and a B side Side for the board so you can kind of increase or decrease the complexity of the game as well as the player ability cards have an a side and a b side for depending on how you want to utilize those player powers 
Yep, it's pretty straightforward and simple. You'll move the worker, you'll both gather the currency, you'll roll the dice, place them back and forth until you have no more die left, and then, of course, you're going to move your T's to get them onto the ships. Acquiring a certain number of ships will end the game, thusly the year, which is also considered the round, and the first player to gather those ships will end the game, and whoever has the most points based on their ships, any of the crates, and any other bonuses that they may have acquired on their board uh, will be the winner of the game. Yeah, I'd say there's kind of a lot going on in the beginning when you're trying to to figure out what all the different things do but I love the use of symbols on the car the different um, T icons are really clear and helpful and then once you get into it it feels really quick at least the the simple the less less advanced version <laughs> what's unique about really it too quickly. is you are able to kind of learn the rules from the rule book and thusly play and most of the time you're not gonna have a lot of questions because the symbols are very very straightforward in the game you'll notice that there's like the if it's got a circle with a card around it that's involving the flipping of the cards um and there's also a couple other symbols that involve movement and gathering and the new points t's values. the points values with a little teacup that's really cute <laughs> yep uh, it's true really though easy. definitely true that this game for a short game it does have quite a bit of complexity in learning the rules uh and that, of course that being said it's very easy to understand once you've gone through it one or two rounds. In a way, that's a good way because it felt like, oh, that was really quick. You know, I want to play again. I want to see how I could do this. Utilizing the the card flipping and moving them more to get your tea up to the harbor and <laughs> things like that. Uh, the quality of components is excellent. Of course. It's very, yeah. very excellent for this game. All the cards are high quality and of course the illustrations are beautiful. It's really, really well done. This is probably my favorite tea game, I would say, thus far. Ooh. I, I, Because I, I, I like Chai, but I think this one's even better. Um, could it be made with more players? Uh, I certainly think it could be, uh, but there is that, that, that competitive nature in this game as to how many spots are available and where you're going to yeah, place. It's kind of nice that it's a little bit smaller of a box so you can just play it with the I mean it's chai tea for two but yeah it does have the blueprint there that it could be in a design way expanded for more players in the future. Yeah definitely. This game here was really nice too when I was playing it. Uh, there's not a there's competition but it's <laughs> not competition the way that you're actually objectively going out of your way to mess with the players. You really want to get what you want to get and sometimes that does affect your opponent Other and of course it might yeah. just be in the way. Yeah, that, that does happen. Uh, selecting spaces is most important uh, when you choose to do so first, and not only that, but also being the first player is something you probably want to strive yeah. towards, especially for the first few years slash rounds. I mean, what you put where on your board is really important. You kind of learn as you're playing that, oh, I could do it like this or like this. There's different options, which is really nice. Yeah, and that comes down to your board, and so it's got a little bit of an engine building aspect to it mm -hmm. where you're placing the cards where you want them to go. Certain placement is bad, other placement is good, and you have to kind of... Uh, think about that when you place if you place a and sometimes less cards might actually be better like you don't have to buy a card every single round yeah if you place a black t on the left hand side of your board it's not gonna be very helpful for the a side because then it's not gonna move that black t so you have to kind of coordinate just the basic ideas of how you place certain things down but you're also able to move those cards around utilizing your workers if you need to and also reflipping cards some cards are worth a lot of value uh, but also don't utilize as much movement in the game thus leading netting you points at the end game if you gather them but not as much at the beginning of the game. some have more flexibility, some have less flexibility but they're either you don't have to flip them or they're worth points which yep. is nice. It's a good like range there and balance. So even in a game where you might see her score a bunch of points from boats it might be possible for me to still keep up, not win obviously in the <laughs> game we played on the live stream but be able it's to close. keep up because I was utilizing the cards to give me points as well as there are certain cards that will net you extra points for keeping T's on them and for collecting multiples of them as well and uh, you know she obviously used the uh, mechanism to uh, create this machine this functionality that allowed her to get her t's up higher which is really interesting to see but yet still not kind of get devastatingly behind if you're able to utilize different tactics in the game I'm moving your board around the p uh, moving your pieces around the board there's this like character that moves around the board and collects certain t's is really tea unique too yeah t harvester yeah. and how you utilize that's kind of cool as well because it kind of encircles the idea of what the game's got um and all the little Little cute tea tins I like that about the game overall high quality beautiful artwork a uh, very fun game and specifically made for two players which is also nice so for those of you who want to play a two-player game this was made for that specific experience which I think mm -hmm. is excellent as well my final thoughts an excellent tea game a lot of fun it's already funded on Kickstarter no surprise to me after yep. playing the game any final thoughts for you I mean 
Steve Games did a great job with Chai. They did a great job with Chai T for Two. So I can tell they've already built a really great community and people are just rallying around that and this is a good one to pick up for those couples two players you just have one person you play games with all Dante like no I play games with you guys too uh, <laughs> a good one to pick up now on Kickstarter um, I guess if I would say anything negative I suppose or for those of you for the audience uh, this is a two-player game so expect to play with one or two players obviously if you're going in for three it's not gonna be it's gonna be a deal breaker uh, the game is a little bit more complex uh, than usual for a game of its time length so expect to go in and have to learn the rules first or watch a video like ours to understand how the game is played and um I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, a little bit of comp was, a little bit of com competition. That was where you my can be major mean. thing. I wanted it to be a little longer for what kind of strategy there was involved in it, but that's also kind of on the flip side a good thing too. It like makes you want to play again. So anyway, it's up to you if you want to pick it up. It's currently on Kickstarter. Chai T for Two by Steep Games. All right outro. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this video, check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. Hit that subscribe button, and of course the bell notification button so you can see more of our videos every day, Monday through Friday. You can also go ahead and check our live stream every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. PST on Facebook, on Twitch, and of course here on YouTube. Watch us play games just like this one, and in fact we did play this game, so if you're interested in seeing the full playthrough, you can watch us play by checking out our walkthrough slash live playthrough section on this channel. You can also go ahead and join us on Patreon, support us for a buck. It does help us out allowing us to do giveaways. We'll be giving away the base game of this one here, or the original game, I should say, Chai, uh, which you can go ahead and pick up on our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Moonshell is coming out, and we have our prototype, can prototype samples coming in uh, momentarily, next week or two here. So waiting to get from the boat to China to here, or from China to the boat to here, and then we'll take a look, make sure everything's uh, copacetic, and then we'll be sending out your way, which I'm very excited to say. Also, if you want, you can go ahead and join us on Discord. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. I'm looking forward to the move. We're getting ready to put all our games in boxes and whatnot. We're going to do some pre-recorded videos here in the next week or so, and we're going to have a new studio, a new live streaming space, and a ton of extra cool little things to show you guys. All right, that's all I got, and as always, I look forward to gathering tea for two with you next time. if you want to do some more advanced player. Really, dog? <laughs> Grab the deer. Just came in. Hold the puppy. Want to join the review. All right. <laughs> okay. It's not a sequel either. It's a, it's a separate game yeah. in the same universe. All right. Three, two.